Okay, so line 2A, tax exempt interest. If you receive any tax exempt interest, including any tax exempt original issue discount OID, such as from municipal bonds, each payer should send you a form 1099 INT or a form 1099 OID. So again, with the interest, usually it's fairly straightforward because you'll get the documentation in the form of a 1099 from the financial institution. In general, your tax exempt stated interest should be shown in box eight of form 1099 INT or for a tax exempt OID bond in box two of form 1099 OID and your tax exempt OID should be shown in box 11 of form 1099 OID enter the total online 2A. So typically data input software will usually have these boxes lined up quite nicely in the data input and can help you to populate uh, your returns. However, if you acquired a tax exempt bond at a premium, only report the net amount of tax exempt interest on line 2A. That is the excess of the tax exempt interest received during the year over the amortized bond premium for the year. I'm not going to go into that in detail. If you need to do more research on that, you can look into it. One of the reasons I don't want to dig into that in too much detail is because most normal in investors are often investing in stocks and bonds possibly with the help of mutual funds or ETFs, possibly under even an umbrella of a 401k plan or an IRA or a 403b or something like that, which means you do have exposure uh, to the bonds, but you're really invested in something that's kind of pooling all these things together with, with other investors. And in that case, you're probably going to have possibly uh, interest from the bonds and dividends that could roll over and we'll talk about what would happen if they're under the umbrella of an IRA or something like that. But it might be less likely that you're going to have this issue with uh, the bond premium. But if you do, again, you can go to the IRS website. You could drill down on some further research from there. Also, if you acquired a tax-exempt OID bond on an acquisition premium, only report the net amount of tax-exempt OID on line 2A. That is the excess of tax-exempt OID for the year over the amortized acquisition premium for the year. So you can see publication 550 for more information about OID, bond premium, and acquisition premium if that is relevant to you. Also include on line 2A, any exempt interest dividends from a mutual fund or other regulated investment company. This amount should be shown in box 12 of form 1099 DIV. Now this can be a little bit confusing because you might think, why isn't it on a 1099 INT? That would be for interest. The DIV you would think would be for dividends. So in other words, if you're investing money, you're typically investing in stocks and bonds, possibly investing in a mutual fund that has a mix of stocks and bonds within it. Now, if you're investing in the bonds or you're investing in the bank, putting it into a savings account or a CD, for example, you're going to be generating revenue on that uh, money that you have invested in the form of interest. That's our primary objective at this point to be thinking about the income from interest, in which case you're basically loaning money to a financial institution, usually, who is paying you for holding on to your money, which they're then going to use to invest elsewhere, possibly for a higher return. That's the general idea. When you are investing in stocks, then typically you're going to get paid in the form of dividends which is the distribution of the earnings of the company to the owners who are the shareholders and the value of the stock could go up. However, you don't realize the value of the stock going up until you actually sell the stock. So it can be a little bit confusing when you're trying to line up all your forms and say, these are all of my interest forms. These are all of my dividend forms because you could have a situation like this where you have the exempt interest dividends, which will be on the form 1099 DIV, uh, which will basically be flowing through to the tax return for interest. So from a logistics standpoint, from a data input standpoint, that could be a little bit frustrating because a lot of financial institutions will put the dividends and the interest on the same form, uh, for example, and some won't. And then you can have a dividend form for the interest. You also could have interest coming through flow through entities like a partnership that flows through to like a K1 or something like that, which again gets a little bit confusing. Although the data input is easy because it's being reported on these forms, when you try to figure out where it is applying on the tax return, 
then it can be a little bit confusing. So, so we just want to be aware of sorting our documentations, but usually it's pretty straightforward because again, you have the forms and the data input software. If you're using software, which I highly recommend, will help you to populate those forms properly.